He came home to see my dad. Uh, my dad was uh, living at Westminster Village, not far from here. And um, he had some dementia. He was having trouble remembering. And um, this was during a time where Sonny, in, in his thinking, realized that things weren't going to last forever, I think. We had been to visit them at Christmas time, and he was just fine. Everything was fine. And we, at that time, we still go to Florida uh, for a month at a time, and we, had, we invited them to come spend a week with us. So, and that was in February. And when they came to visit us in February, there was a marked difference, and there was something wrong with Sonny. I had already noticed, you know, we had basically weekly telephone conversations, and here's a man who had tremendous, you know, command of the language, generally speaking, on the telephone, and um, always coherent, and always, you know, sometimes redundant, but almost always leading someplace important. And so it was always worthwhile to listen to what he was saying. But he'd get halfway through a thought and lose it. And, you know, he's 60, and I'm thinking, that's too early for... You know, somebody to be experiencing these kind of mental problems. And you know, when I heard about all the little maladies he was having, I assumed it was just the drugs. I'm just going to write it off. And that's the advice I gave my mom. Just don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Then sometime that summer, I was seemed like August, you know, I'd call home regularly or so. And in August, I'd talk to him. And uh, you know, we'd say something like, how's the weather? And he said, oh, it's, it's a beautiful day here. It's like the Pit Pittsburgh paints, all the different colors of the paint yeah. So let me talk to mom. You know, I said, mom, this is strange, you know. Something strange. She was, yeah, she, uh, you know, I didn't know what it was, but it was medication. And she was going through, you know, she was taking it from doctor to doctor to doctor. My mom was driving to various places. And after um, a series of these meetings with doctors, they were at home, sitting in the family room and watching television. And, and uh, he apparently turns to her and says, hey, you know, thanks so much for driving me around today. And she says, oh, no. No problem, I, you know, happy to do it. She said, my dad turned to her and said, yeah, my, my wife and I really appreciate it. And my mom freaked. So we go into the doctor, I'd already called him, and I said, something is terrible wrong, and I don't know what to do. So we asked Doug the three questions that they always ask. What is your name? I don't know. What year is it? I don't know. Who is president of the United States? I don't know. And he said, Dr. Bodell said, Doug, I want you to admit yourself to Overlook Hospital. And Doug said, okay. He came home. He dismissed him. I don't think he spoke too much after that. There was no help. He was seeing three neurologists, and that is a neurological disorder. And none of them said anything about this project. And even then, I'm thinking, geez, I hope they can restore my father to where he was. Never, never thinking that he had a terminal disorder. Never dawned on me. And uh, we, we take him there, and they you know, submit him for a bunch of tests, and we meet with a doctor, and she basically, you know, her first comment is, well, it's a virus of the brain. And I remember my mother saying, oh, thank God, thinking that, take some medicine, take a few aspirin, you get rid of this. And she says, it's not that kind of virus, and told us it was terminal. 